interested you in your your big stuff. They are, and I'm, they're interested in a lot of things. A lot of things that don't matter or shouldn't. Rihanna and Jay-Z have long been the subject of speculation and discussion. In the past, there were widespread beliefs suggesting a potential romantic involvement between Jay-Z and Rihanna, even though Jay-Z was already married to Beyonce. According to Rihanna, there have been undisclosed incidents involving Jay-Z that were not previously known. It's uncomfortable and it's a lot of conversations. You know. When you possess a billion dollars on an elevator, drama is almost inevitable. Jay-Z and Beyonce, the unrivaled power couple in hip-hop, found themselves at the center of a storm of cheating rumors after a security tape leaked, seemingly capturing Beyonce's sister Solange, confronting Jay-Z in an elevator with her purse after the 2014 Met Gala. While this incident became a focal point of intrigue from the event, it wasn't the starting point for the speculation surrounding infidelity. In the years preceding their quiet wedding in 2008, persistent rumors of infidelity reportedly led Jay-Z and Beyonce to discreetly part ways. Speculation about Jay-Z's alleged extramarital actions has lingered within the Bayhive ever since. The situation intensified when Beyonce, through her 2016 album Lemonade, dropped numerous hints about infidelity, prompting her devoted fans to embark on a passionate quest to uncover the identity of the supposed mistress, affectionately dubbed Becky with the good hair. Jay-Z later confirmed these accusations in his album 444. While the elusive identity of Becky remains uncertain, the revelations shed light on the Jay-Z cheating rumors and illuminate how the Carters navigated through these challenges. You'll never be enough. Let's just keep it real, Jay-Z. Jay-Z and Beyonce enjoyed a period of relative tranquility before their seemingly flawless relationship faced a barrage of cheating rumors. In 2001, Jay-Z mentioned to Vanity Fair that they were just beginning to try to date each other. However, four years later, the media buzzed with reports of Jay-Z's alleged affair with his protege Rihanna, casting a shadow over his relationship with the former Destiny's child star. According to J. Randy Taraborelli, the author of Beyonce's unauthorized biography, the couple discreetly separated during this time with Beyonce grappling with uncertainties fueled by the Rihanna speculation. Well, you know, that had been a long-standing rumor that uh, Jay-Z and Rihanna were having an affair. And my job as a biographer is, is to sort of unpack these rumors and and put the lie to them if possible or confirm them. When Beyonce unleashed the fiery breakup anthem, Ring the Alarm in 2006, speculation within the Bayhive suggested that the other chick in the song was Rihanna, and the dog mentioned in the lyrics was Jay-Z. However, Beyonce's camp reportedly denied any such connections. But was there any validity to these rumors? According to Tara Borelli, Jay-Z didn't actually cheat on Beyonce, and he alleged that the rumors were concocted by Rihanna's publicist Jonathan Hay as a strategy to elevate her career. In a 2015 email to the New York Daily News, Hay purportedly confessed to the scheme, expressing apologies to both Jay-Z and Rihanna, acknowledging the fabrication, and describing the entire situation as very awkward. So Jay-Z and Rihanna never did the nasty. They did not do the nasty, Wendy. Rihanna and Jay-Z connection dates back to 2004 when the young singer from Barbados was summoned to the offices at Def Jam Recordings, where Jay-Z held the position of president at the time. Rihanna has openly shared her initial nervousness about meeting the influential mogul and entrepreneur. Recalling the moment in an interview with The Guardian in 2007, she admitted feeling intense anxiety as she found herself face to face with the man who would play a pivotal role in changing her life. She humorously described the experience, saying, I was like, oh God, he's right there. I can't look. I can't look. I can't look. In a demonstration of their enduring friendship and professional support, when Rihanna and the NFL revealed that she would be headlining the 2023 Super Bowl halftime show, Jay-Z was among the first to extend his congratulations to his protege and friend. Despite the various challenges and rumors, including speculations of an affair in 2005, it has remained evident that both Rihanna and Jay-Z harbor a profound care for each other and wholeheartedly endorse one another's careers. The camera represents so many people, a huge audience, and the camera at a Super Bowl it's one of the biggest audience. While it's practically impossible to imagine a world in which everyone doesn't realize what an incredible talent Rihanna is, it seems that this was the case when she auditioned in front of Jay-Z, who was the president of Def Jam Records at the time. Rihanna's journey to stardom began when record producer Evan Rogers discovered her shortly after she won a local beauty pageant in Barbados. After moving to the United States to live with Rogers and his wife, she recorded her debut single, Ponda Replay. When Rihanna performed the song for Jay-Z at Def Jam, it 
solidified her status as a star in his eyes, as recounted by the singer to Rolling Stone. <laughs> However, it wasn't until Jay-Z witnessed her live performance of the song that he was truly won over. According to New York DJ Saifa Sounds, there was a debate between him and Jay-Z about signing Rihanna, with Jay-Z expressing reservations. Sounds recalled the discussion stating he was like, I don't know, it might be just one song. I'm like, no, I'm telling you, Jay, this is why you have me around. My ear is your ear. I'm the A and R. The relationship between Rihanna and Jay-Z has long been clouded in confusion, with persistent rumors suggesting that the two had an affair when they first collaborated. These rumors date back to 2005 and allegedly played a significant role in Beyoncé and Jay-Z's reported one-year split, as the cuff it singer grappled with the onslaught of stories. According to author J. Randy Tarabarelli, as reported by the Daily Mail, Beyoncé didn't know what to make of this, and it actually ended up breaking them up for a time. They spent maybe a year apart from each other, because Beyoncé just wasn't sure of what to make of the situation with Rihanna. However, it later emerged that these rumors were nothing more than fabrication. Publicist Jonathan Hay confessed to planting the stories in the press after being hired to promote Rihanna's debut single, Ponder Replay. To a publicist who worked for Rihanna, who admitted that he planted the story in the press, it was not true. It was a story that he planted in order to further Rihanna's career. Despite the success that came from her first meeting with Jay-Z, securing a record deal, Rihanna still experienced nervousness during her initial audition. Given that she was a teenager from Barbados meeting one of the most famous and influential figures in the music industry, it's understandable. Rihanna later shared her memories of that nerve-wracking experience with her fans via her Instagram story, acknowledging, feels like just yesterday I was shaking in the hallways of Def Jam, waiting to audition for Jay, as reported by the Evening Standard. In a similar account to The Guardian in 2007, Rihanna described the anxiety she felt during her audition for Jay-Z. She recalled being extremely quiet, shy, and cold throughout the process, expressing the surreal feeling of sitting across from the iconic Jay-Z. I remember being extremely quiet. I was very shy. I was cold the entire time. I had butterflies. I'm sitting across from Jay-Z. Like Jay-Z, I was starstruck. The friendship between Jay-Z and Rihanna transcends the realm of the music industry, extending to various aspects of life beyond creating and producing successful albums and songs. Jay-Z, a renowned rapper and mogul, has been candid about offering advice to Rihanna on a range of topics, emphasizing that while he provides guidance, he cannot control the outcomes or decisions she makes based on that advice. And when she walked into our office, I was like, you know, she just had, it was just something about it. It was just, she had this, you know, it was just something about it. And then she um, performed the song and I was like, okay. In a 2013 interview with Hot 97's Angie Martinez, Jay-Z addressed whether he intervenes if he feels Rihanna is making questionable choices. He asserted, that's not my place, no, again. I can't control the outcome of her life. I can't intervene. I can give advice when asked, and that's it. I can provide information, and then life has to play out. Life has to happen. Rihanna, in turn, has shared insights into the advice she has received from Jay-Z over the years. During an interview on On The Record with Fuse, she revealed that Jay-Z once told her, you must be a really great person because great things keep happening for you. Don't ever change who you are. Always remain humble the same. Despite the early career rumors that surrounded Rihanna, she has developed strong friendships with Jay-Z and Beyonce in recent times. The trio's camaraderie makes sense given their individual success and the collaborative roles they've played in each other's achievements over the years. Interestingly, Beyonce may have played a role in Rihanna's early rise to fame. Producer L.A. Reid revealed in his memoir, Sing to Me, My Story of Making Music, Finding Magic, and Searching for Who's Next, that he initially didn't see Rihanna's potential as a performer when they first met. However, Beyonce's endorsement changed his perspective. Reid wrote, At the label we thought singer Tiara Marie would be the big star. We spent more time on her, did more work on her, paid more attention to her. Beyonce's pivotal comment, according to Reid, was, Beyonce came up to me and said, That Rihanna girl, she's a b Despite the generally positive narratives surrounding Jay-Z and Rihanna's friendship, there have been instances of discord. In 2019, Rihanna publicly criticized Jay-Z for agreeing to perform at the Super Bowl. She expressed her disagreement in an interview with Vogue, stating, I couldn't dare do that. For what? Who gains from that? Not my people. Rihanna clarified that she didn't want to be perceived as a sellout by participating in a Super Bowl performance for the NFL, especially considering the protests led by former San Francisco 49 ERS player Colin K. Kaepernick. What'd he say? I said no to the Super Bowl. You need me. I don't need you. Every night we in the end zone. Tell the NFL we in stadiums too. <laughs>
but now got to deal with the NFL. Rihanna's critical comments about Jay-Z's decision to perform at the Super Bowl in 2019 were perceived as especially contentious, considering they were made after Jay-Z had announced his partnership with the NFL to influence the league's entertainment strategy. In Jay-Z's official statement via the NFL, he explained, with its global reach, the National Football League has the platform and opportunity to inspire change across the country. This partnership is an opportunity to strengthen the fabric of communities across America. While Rihanna did not explicitly confirm whether her remarks were in response to Jay-Z's collaboration with the NFL, many interpreted them as such. Interestingly, Rihanna did not address her past comment when she later announced her own plans to perform at the 2023 Super Bowl. Jay-Z's unwavering belief in Rihanna's talent has been evident throughout the years, and he hasn't hesitated to express his admiration for her. This support continued when the NFL announced Rihanna as the performer for the 2023 Super Bowl halftime show. In a press release sent via the NFL, Jay-Z praised Rihanna, stating, Rihanna is a generational talent, a woman of humble beginnings who has surpassed expectations at every turn, a person born on the small island of Barbados who became one of the most prominent artists ever, self-made in business and entertainment. Reports from Capital FM indicated that Jay-Z played a role in helping Rihanna prepare for the significant event. Rihanna reportedly sought assistance from her old friend and mentor to organize the show. Following the alleged Rihanna drama manufactured by a publicist, Jay-Z and Beyonce officially tied the knot in 2008 at the rapper's luxurious Manhattan penthouse, as reported by People. The couple welcomed their daughter, Blue Ivy, four years later. Collaborating on part two, On the Run, from Jay-Z's Magna Carta Holy Grail in 2013, the Carters continued to showcase their partnership, and Beyonce released her HBO documentary, Life Is But A Dream. However, the path for the married couple wasn't always smooth, and Rita Ora found herself entangled in the scrutiny of the Bay Hive. According to the Times, Jay-Z signed Rita Ora, the Your Song hitmaker, to his Rock Nation label in 2008. While their professional collaboration ultimately led to a dramatic lawsuit by 2015, the duo found themselves at the center of rumors regarding an alleged affair in 2013. Despite the speculations, Ora vehemently denied the claims. When the hosts of Power 105.1's The Breakfast Club brought up the cheating allegations during a 2014 interview, Aura strongly responded saying, Don't you dare disrespect Beyonce like that ever again in your entire life, via MTV. She further emphasized, You should know better than that. That's just straight up disrespect. You can't even go there. In the midst of the Rita Ora controversy in 2013, former model and rapper Liv shared her own account of a potential affair with Jay-Z in the song The Invasion Part 2. According to the Daily Mail, Liv rapped about turning Jay-Z down, citing her respect for Beyoncé, whom she later dissed in The Invasion Part 5. Liv claimed in an interview with Radar Online that she met Jay-Z in 2008 while filming a Budweiser commercial in Miami, Florida. Liv stated, 1. That's really immature to send the bodyguard to get my number. 2. I'm not somebody that would just get a call when he's in town. However, she reportedly gave him her number after encountering him again. Liv later denied the rumors she helped spark in Sorry Mrs. Carter. During the time surrounding Jay-Z's Magna Carta Holy Grail and Beyoncé's self-titled album, rumors of infidelity surfaced as the couple embarked on their joint on the run tour. The speculation arose when Jay-Z was allegedly seen being overly friendly with a Belgian beauty queen named Claudia Sheelan. According to the Mirror, Sheelan claimed that Jay-Z approached her in a nightclub, sent her a large bottle of champagne, and complimented the local women, stating, I've been all over the entire world, but the girls in Antwerp are the prettiest girls. Notably, he did not mention Beyonce or Blue. While this flirtation, if true, might not necessarily have been a breach of trust, reports from Star Magazine suggested that the Carters were contemplating a trial separation during this period. Allegedly, conflicts over tour schedules had led to Beyonce referring to Jay-Z as selfish. Hollywood Life reported that Jay-Z visited Beyonce in Australia during her Mrs. Carter tour in an effort to reconcile. However, another anonymous source later dispelled these separation rumors, stating that no one was splitting up. However, this is what 50 Cent said about them. She said, come on, I'm talking to her. She jumped out, she was like, duh, duh, duh. and I'm like, wait, what is she doing? In 2014, TMZ released a now infamous elevator security video capturing an altercation between Jay-Z and Solange Knowles during a Met Gala after party at the Standard Hotel. 
In the footage, Solange can be seen appearing to physically confront Jay-Z, while Beyonce stands by without intervening. The incident sparked widespread speculation about the cause of Solange's anger. Controversial talk show host Wendy Williams fueled rumors that the argument was related to Jay-Z's alleged infidelity with designer Rachel Roy. On the other hand, people reported that Solange was provoked after a confrontation with Roy earlier in the night. Three years after the incident, Jay-Z addressed it in his song Jay-Z from the 2017 album 444, suggesting that cheating was at the root of the conflict. He rapped, you egged Solange on, knowing all along, all you had to say you was wrong, and added, you almost went Eric Benet, referring to singer-songwriter Eric Benet's infamous infidelity that led to his split with Halle Berry in 2003. In 2014, rumors circulated suggesting that Jay-Z and R&B singer Maya, who had collaborated on the 2000 single Best of Me, Part 2, were involved in a long-term alleged affair. Reports even indicated that Jay-Z had financially supported Maya. While both parties initially ignored the rumors, Beyonce inadvertently added fuel to the fire during an on-the-run tour stop when she changed the lyrics to her song, Resentment, a track addressing infidelity. Instead of the original line, been riding with you for six years, she sang, been riding with you for 12 years, which precisely matched the duration of her relationship with Jay-Z. This alteration sparked intense speculation among fans. Well, I look at my personal life as sacred. I look at the man that I choose as sacred. That's a partnership. That's not for the world, especially when you are learning each other. The inclusion of Maya in the cheating rumors remains unclear, but she promptly denied any affair with Jay-Z in a since-deleted Instagram post. Maya wrote, I play second to no one, pay my own bills, have my own label, own management company, rely on God only and respect myself and marriage too much for nonsense. False rumors are crafted for ratings and numbers. Following the Elevator Gate incident, Jay-Z and Beyonce's relationship came under intense scrutiny, especially with ongoing cheating rumors. The couple embarked on their highly successful co-headlining On The Run tour, which grossed around $100 million in ticket sales alone, according to Billboard. However, beneath the surface, reports from Page Six suggested that the Carters were contemplating a separation without officially divorcing. Allegedly, they brought marriage counselors on the road and were trying to navigate a way to split without jeopardizing the lucrative tour, given the millions of dollars in advances from promoters. Despite maintaining silence about their marital challenges for years, Jay-Z eventually disclosed how close they came to ending their marriage. In a 2017 interview with the New York Times T Magazine, he stated, you know, most people walk away and like divorce rate is like 50% or something because most people can't see themselves. The hardest thing is seeing pain on someone's face that you caused and then have to deal with yourself. Beyonce's 2016 visual album Lemonade served as a powerful expression of the pain and emotions associated with infidelity. The single Sorry in particular featured scathing lyrics and a spoken word segment that confronted the impact of betrayal. The album in many ways confirmed that Jay-Z had been unfaithful. In response, Jay-Z released his album 444 the following year, exploring the complex emotions that arise when one hurts someone they love. Both albums were deeply emotional and brutally honest, providing a raw and sometimes uncomfortable look into their personal struggles. In an interview with the New York Times T Magazine, Jay-Z acknowledged that they use their music as a form of therapy. He described the reality of that period as excruciating, likening it to being in the middle of a hurricane. And that's where we were sitting, and it was uncomfortable, and we had a lot of conversations, he shared. You know, I was really proud of the music she made, and she was really proud of the art I released. The controversy surrounding Becky with the good hair emerged from Beyonce's album Lemonade, where fans speculated speculated that this character represented Jay-Z's alleged mistress. The Bayhive quickly pointed fingers at various celebrities, including Taylor Swift and Rachel Ray, who was mistakenly identified as Rachel Roy. Many people are speculating that Becky's actually fashion designer Rachel Roy and that she was the cause of the infamous elevator fight between Jay, Beyonce, Jay and Beyonce's sister Solange. Rita Ora unintentionally placed herself in the suspect list with a 2016 Instagram Stories post that fans interpreted as an admission of guilt. In the post, she posed in a lemon 
emblazoned bra with an R pendant flipped around to resemble a J just days before the release of Lemonade. Aura took to Twitter to deny the rumors and later addressed the speculation in an interview with The Times in 2018. She humorously remarked, Hey, all I want to say to that is, dude, if I were Becky with the good hair, wouldn't I actually have to have good hair? Look at it. It's all weave and extensions. Aura also praised Beyonce as the nicest, bestest person. Rachel Roy became a central figure in the speculation surrounding Jay-Z's alleged infidelity, particularly after the elevator incident involving Solange Knowles. Having been linked to the rapper for years, Roy was previously married to Damon Dash, Jay-Z's former Rockefeller Records business partner. Dash and Jay-Z had a well-known feud after selling their stakes in the label to Island Def Jam. After Beyonce released Sorry, Roy appeared to incriminate herself as Becky with the good hair in a now-deleted Instagram post. The post's caption read, Good hair don't care, but we will take good lighting for selfies or self-truths always, leading to intense speculation from the Bayhive. However, Roy vehemently denied any connection to the rumors, stating in a release statement that her post was misunderstood and there was no validity to the idea Idea that the song references me personally. She also expressed respect for love, marriages, families, and strength in a later removed tweet. Diana Gordon, the co-writer of the track, suggested in an interview with Entertainment Weekly that none of the speculation about Becky with the good hair was accurate, dismissing the entire controversy as so silly. In 2017, Jay-Z put the lingering cheating rumors to rest by acknowledging his infidelity in an interview with the New York Times T Magazine. Although listeners of Lemonade and Four 44 were already familiar with the details, Jay-Z didn't provide much insight into how he and Beyonce were handling the aftermath until a 2018 interview on David Letterman's My Next Guest Needs No Introduction. During the interview, Jay-Z spoke about the healing process and the efforts they made to rebuild their relationship. I have a beautiful wife who's understanding and knew I'm not the worst of what I've done. We did the hard work of going to therapy and you know, we love each other, right? Jay-Z shared. Like you, I like to believe we're in a better place today, but we're still working and communicating communicating and growing. Following this period of reconciliation, the Carters made a triumphant comeback as a united front in the world of hip-hop. They surprised fans with the release of their collaborative album, Everything Is Love, in June 2018. The couple demonstrated their continued success with their On The Run 2 tour, earning a remarkable $250 million that same year, further solidifying their status as the reigning king and queen of hip-hop. Yeah. I'm good on any MLK Boulevard. Beyonce and Sean Jay-Z Carter epitomize the term power couple. These music legends, both individually influential and talented, become an unstoppable force when united. However, much of the public's understanding of this notoriously private duo is shaped by the glimpses they choose to share. Beyonce's captionless Instagram photos capturing idyllic family moments or the occasional interview where they cautiously navigate questions about their relationship. Throughout the years, the couple's mixed signals and enigmatic references and song lyrics have given rise to intriguing mysteries surrounding their connection. The couple has consistently maintained a reserved stance when it comes to sharing the intimate details of their relationship, opting to keep their romantic highs and lows mostly private, apart from the occasional revealing lyrics in their music. This tendency to downplay personal attention has been a constant theme throughout their journey together. Interestingly, even the timeline of their romantic history appears to be a point of contention between them, with contradictory statements emerging over the years. How did you find time to get married? Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's it's difficult. For instance, in a 2008 interview with Seventeen via Pop Sugar, Beyonce mentioned that she was 18 when they first met and began dating at the age of 19, around the year 2000. On the other hand, Jay-Z suggested that they had known each other since Beyonce's early recording days, specifically during the collaboration with Wyclef Jean for Destiny's Child's No, 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 Part 2 Inches around 1997. This discrepancy in their recollections might be attributed to innocent mix-ups or differing perspectives on their their initial encounters. Nevertheless, the ambiguity surrounding their early relationship continues to fuel speculation and conspiracies. Beyonce has consistently adhered to a policy of keeping her relationship with Jay-Z off-limits in interviews, emphasizing her preference for letting their music serve as the primary channel for expression. In a 2005 interview with Essence, she revealed, I never talked about relationships, I only talk about them in my songwriting. Otherwise, things get too messy. It has worked out because now nobody expects me to talk about them. But it's 
It's hard too. You fall in love and you want to tell everybody, but that's a place I just don't go. This sentiment was reiterated in 2008 after their intimate wedding when she emphasized the authenticity of their connection. What Jay and I have is real. It's not about interviews or getting the right photo op. It's real, she affirmed to the magazine. And this thing led people to speculate that their marriage is all about money. One person wrote, lol, they both have no soul. 537. They're ashamed of themselves, BC. They hide who they truly are. Scared people will see. Ain't that the weak Another one added, nah y'all were delusional then BC, if you can't see both of them been FOS this whole time, never liked either of them, and if you can just look at her and your spirit don't tell her that's evil then I'll pray for you too. That's it for today, see you in the next video, until then goodbye.